Hello and welcome to the chemistry of carbon dioxide's role in ocean acidification and its effects on ocean life. First, let's take a look at what we mean by acid. And we can look at this bar as a continuum on the left showing low amounts of dissolved hydrogen ions and on the right, high amount of dissolved hydrogen ions. And going from left to right, things become more acidic. So a low amount of dissolved hydrogen ions is a high pH. That would be a basic solution. And on the right, a high amount of dissolved hydrogen ions is a low pH. In other words, an acidic solution. It kind of seems reversed, and that's because pH is the inverse of the amount of hydrogen ions dissolved. That is why the pH comes out as high for basic and low for acidic. So going from left to right is considered acidification. In the laboratory, we have ways of identifying how basic or acidic something is by the color occurring on a universal indicator. And right in the middle, kind of a greenish is neutral. The pH is 7. So acidification is an increase in dissolved hydrogen ions. Make sure you remember that. You might want to write it down somewhere. So what are the consequences of increasing dissolved carbon dioxide? How does increased hydrogen ion concentration affect various chemical and life processes in the ocean? Carbon dioxide in the atmosphere will dissolve in ocean water, and the result of that is a reaction between the carbon dioxide and the water resulting in carbonic acid which is aqueous H2CO3. Aqueous refers to a compound that is dissolved in water. But carbonic acid, H2CO3, when aqueous, actually also undergoes a reaction. It loses a hydrogen ion, and the products are hydrogen carbonate, HCO3 minus aqueous, and an aqueous hydrogen ion, a hydrogen ion dissolved in water. So the hydrogen ions are what we're most interested in. But let's back up a little bit. If we understand a little bit more about how these reactions occur, we can understand a little bit better about what's going on with carbon dioxide dissolved in water. So these reactions are reversible, shown by this double arrow. In other words, the products can react and become reactants. And so what does that mean if the amount of carbon dioxide in the water increases? Well, before the beginning of industrialization, not more than 150 years ago, there was a balance between the amount of carbon dioxide that dissolved and the amount of carbon dioxide that left the water and went into the atmosphere. But over the last 150 years, there's been an increase in the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And so therefore, there's an increase in the amount of carbon dioxide dissolving versus the amount coming out. That balance has been disrupted. So what happens when there's more carbon dioxide dissolved? And this is where the reversibility of the reactions becomes important, because if you increase one of the products, in this case carbon dioxide, that will shift the reaction toward the right and you get an increase in a product, in this case carbonic acid. Well, if carbonic acid is increased, that's going to shift that reaction, that dissociation toward the right, and you get an increase in the amount of hydrogen carbonate ions dissolved and the amount of H plus ions dissolved. So an increase in carbon dioxide dissolved is an increase in H plus ions dissolved. And that is what gives us ocean acidification, a lowering of the pH of ocean water, and that is an increase in hydrogen ion concentration. So how does increasing hydrogen ion concentration affect marine life? So to answer that, we're going to take a look at hydrogen ion effect on calcium carbonate skeletons. And in animal life on the Earth, there are two main compounds that make up skeletal structures. For vertebrates, it's calcium phosphate, and the chemical word for that is hydroxyapatite, which we won't worry about. And the other major skeletal compound, and this is in marine life, is calcium carbonate. CaCO3. And we will also look at hydrogen ion effect on biochemical processes. So let's first focus on hydrogen ion effect on calcium carbonate skeletons. Calcium carbonate skeletons are found in a large variety of sea creatures such as coral mollusks, algae, crustaceans, and sea urchins. So how do hydrogen ions interact with calcium carbonate, the compound that makes up the skeletal structures of all these sea creatures? 
Before we answer that, let's take a look at the skeletal structure itself. The calcium carbonate compound is an ongoing array of calcium ions and carbonate ions. And so we get this solid structure, an alternating array of positive and negative ions. This is the molecular view of the calcium carbonate skeletal structure. If a hydrogen ion comes along, that's going to bond with the carbonate ion and create a hydrogen carbonate ion. Well, hydrogen carbonate ions are soluble in water. They will leave the skeleton and not be part of it, which leaves a calcium ion with nothing to bond to. And so the calcium ion also becomes dissolved in water. It becomes aqueous. So the result of hydrogen ion contacting a calcium carbonate skeleton is you lose the carbonate from the skeleton and you lose the calcium from the skeleton. They both become aqueous. So what happens if you keep putting hydrogen ions into the water? Well, the calcium carbonate skeletal structure will keep losing calcium ions and carbonate ions. In other words, it will start to dissolve into the water and the skeletal structure will be destroyed. What we can do with these three reactions is add them up to get an overall reaction. And the way we add these up is exactly the way you would add mathematical equations. You cross out whatever is the same on both sides, and then you simply add up whatever is on the left and add up whatever is on the right. So what we get is the reactants carbon dioxide and water and calcium carbonate, and on the right, HCO3- minus hydrogen carbonate and calcium ions. So I hope you can see the huge problem this presents for many, 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 many organisms in the ocean is that they lose their calcium carbonate skeleton and they cannot live without that skeleton. Let's consider the aqueous carbonate ion. Carbonate is essential for those sea creatures to build a calcium carbonate skeleton. And any dissolved calcium carbonate in the ocean water is available for these organisms to create their skeletal structures. But if the carbonate ion encounters a hydrogen ion, the result is hydrogen carbonate. Aqueous hydrogen bonds to carbonate. This is an extremely important reaction because what this means is that carbonate, CO3 2 minus, is no longer available to build the calcium carbonate structures. In other words, there is a decrease in calcification. Calcification is the biochemical process of synthesizing a solid calcium carbonate skeleton from biologically available calcium ions and externally available aqueous carbonate ions. If we take away those aqueous carbonate ions, make them into hydrogen carbonate, hydrogen carbonate is not usable to create a calcium carbonate skeleton. And so there is decreased calcification. So what are the problems does increased hydrogen ion concentration in the water create? Well, in all living organisms, biochemical reactions work best in a narrow pH range, a narrow range of H plus concentration. The vast majority of biochemical reactions are reversible reactions. So any reaction occurring in the body, and there are many, with aqueous hydrogen, if we increase the aqueous hydrogen, in other words, decrease the pH, more acidity, then reactions are shifted toward the right, toward the product side. That changes the biochemistry, and that can cause disease and death. This is not only true among sea creatures, it is true among all living organisms. Main points, greater atmospheric carbon dioxide results in greater dissolved carbon dioxide. In other words, aqueous carbon dioxide. Greater aqueous carbon dioxide results in greater hydrogen ion concentration in the water. In other words, a decrease in pH, and that is a decrease in the basicity of the water, and we call that acidification. I specifically say decrease in basicity because ocean water is actually basic, around pH 8.2, and so we're decreasing that basicity. It's, it's getting closer to 8.0. That may, that may sm sound like a small change, but it's actually an extremely significant change for the biochemistry of the reactions that occur in the ocean water and the reactions that occur in the organisms that live in the ocean. Increasing the amount of aqueous hydrogen ions has a variety of negative effects. Dissolving calcium carbonate skeletal structures, removing carbonate availability coupled with skeletal decomposition results in a net decrease in biological construction of skeletal structures, and this we call a loss of calcification. 
and also disrupting many biochemical processes an increase in hydrogen ion concentration results in a shift toward more reactants, and this disrupts the biochemistry of the organism. That's it. See ya.